life in the trees would lead to another critical change in our ancestors' bodies. A change deep within their eyes as they began to see the world in rich color. I first got interested in the evolution of color vision back in 2009. I was watching my two kids, Nathaniel and Hannah, playing a game called Hiss, where they matched cards of a certain color to make a snake. Nathaniel's you know, about three and a half years older than Hannah, and he should whoop her, right? But he consistently lost. And he would lose because he'd make mistakes with one kind of card, which was purple and blue. Mm -hmm. And then we realized Nathaniel's likely colorblind. In a sense, he sees the world like early primates did before they evolved our rich color vision. Nathaniel can only see a limited range of yellows and blues and can't tell the difference between reds, greens, and purples. This means he's not so great at games like his. But it doesn't affect his life much more than that. And it certainly doesn't affect his ability to find food or to survive to adulthood. That wasn't the case for our primate ancestors. For millions of years, they'd been unable to tell the difference between fine shades of red and green. Then, about 23 million years ago, one group of primates evolved the ability to see many more colors. Now, they could tell the difference between ripe red fruits and unripe green fruits, and spot the most nutritious leaves. In the evolutionary battle for survival, this would have been a big advantage. So what happened to the eyes of our ancestors? How did our rich color vision evolve? So what's the drill here? Jay's been studying color vision for the last 25 years. He combines cutting edge genetics with studies on humans and other primates. Everything is cool about color. It's a silent language that speaks to our emotions. And it's just fascinating. This is the place, huh? Yep. This is where we test color vision in the monkeys. His work helped scientists figure out that most mammals, including most primates, see a limited range of colors. This is Kramer. Hi, Kramer. And Kramer is red-green colorblind, but he has good blue-yellow color vision. In order to train them, we use the colors that they can see. So as you can see, that here is this yellow blob against a gray background. Kramer can see that as well as we can. If they get it right, they get a little reward, and they also get a clicking sound. Oh, he clearly he was trying to kiss it there. <laughs> <laughs> he really did. He went, Mom! You can see how good he is at it. He is. Kramer aces this first test. You've done really well there, Kramer. But change the colors to red and green, and it's a whole different ballgame. If you don't have any color vision, this is completely invisible. If you can't see red or green, this just looks like a totally gray background. Most humans can clearly see this red blob, but Kramer can't. Like my son Nathaniel, he can't tell the difference between reds and greens. OK, Kramer, you are a star. <laughs> so why is this happening? Why doesn't Kramer see the world like we do? Kramer's eyes, like all eyes, rely on special proteins called opsins to detect color. They're held in thousands of special cells in the retina in the back of the eye. Kramer's got two types of opsin, each tuned to specific wavelengths of light. Signals from these opsins are then interpreted by the brain, which allows us to perceive color. But to see color like we do, Kramer would need a third opsin tuned to different wavelengths of light. We think our early primate ancestors were like Kramer. They had just two opsins as well. So how did they evolve a third opsin? The answer is in our DNA. Each opsin is encoded by a single gene. And when scientists compared these genes, they found that the gene for the newer opsin sits right next to one of the old ones. And significantly, they are incredibly similar. Both facts are telltale clues as to how the extra gene evolved. 
the old Obsen gene must have been duplicated. And one of these copies then acquired a small number of mutations that allowed it to detect different wavelengths of light. But there's one more question. Could our rich color vision result from just duplicating a gene? Or would there have to be changes to the brain as well? To find out, Jay has tried to replicate what happened in nature in his lab. It's actually a great evolutionary question. How did color vision evolve? How can something so complicated evolve? Jay implanted a third opsin gene from a human directly into the retinas of a colorblind squirrel monkey called Sam. What we did is really a test to see what's the minimal thing you could do in order to give an animal color vision. The results were incredible. Like Kramer, Sam used to fail this test. Now he can easily tell the difference between reds and greens. Jay has recreated evolutionary history and given Sam human-like color vision. And color still plays a huge part in our lives today. Color helps us communicate, attract attention, and even express emotions. We often take it for granted, but it massively enriches our experience of the world. Good boy. But our focus on vision has come with some trade-offs, namely, our poor sense of smell. Like most humans, I'm experiencing this wonderful vista here with my eyes. But the dog's experiencing this in a very different way. His is a world of smells. We think that a dog's sense of smell is anywhere from a thousand to a million times better than ours. Like many mammals, it's his main way of understanding the world around him. This fundamental difference in our sense of smell is also reflected in our DNA. A dog has about a thousand genes that are devoted to detecting odors. We have roughly the same number, but about 600 of them don't work anymore. They're relics. It's a similar story in other primates with color vision. These broken genes reveal another legacy of our primate past. As our distant ancestors gained this wonderfully rich sense of color vision, what happened was our sense of smell became less important. And in the evolutionary world, it's use it or lose it. And that's exactly what happened to our sense of smell. It diminished over time. So while we can thank our inner monkey for our wonderful color vision, we can also blame it for our lousy sense of smell. <laughs>